Tis the season for planning for the silly season, and we're doing December Down Under this time. Hi, it's Erin. I'm so excited to plan for December with you. As someone who lives in the Southern Hemisphere, particularly in Queensland, Australia, December is not remotely cosy for us. December is the beginning of summer. There's not a lot of Australian or Southern Hemisphere themed summer Christmas stuff out there, so I wanted to try and experiment with a little bit that I did find. I'm using a big patchwork of stuff from all over. These are sheets of washi that I got from Spotlight here in Australia. The ones with the gold gilded lettering and also sheet music I thought would be a perfect fit for a cozy Christmassy theme that's kind of, it reads Christmas, but it's not screaming Christmas at you too much, although something later will scream Christmas, that's okay. I'm also cherry picking a few items from the Paper Monogatari Autumn Serenity set, which Anna from Journal Away very kindly sent me. Thank you so much, Anna. I'm having the best time playing with them. The caramel colored washi tape and this green paper here and also some other elements are from that set. Mitsu must inspect because these have come a long way, so he needs to sniff everything. Cats really just have a way of knowing when you're trying to concentrate on something and causing as much havoc as possible. Like look at this. Thanks Mitsu. I definitely knew I wanted to steer away from really bright red and green this year. I wanted to do things in a little bit more of a muted colour palette, so this caramel I think is providing a really good basis for that. I sort of wanted to take some inspiration from Australian flora and fauna because of another element that I will introduce very soon that is going to be quite prominent in this setup. There are also beautiful dark saturated greens in Australian flora and fauna, especially out in the rainforests, which aren't too far away from me. But a lot of our really iconic Aussie stuff like the gum trees and that kind of thing have this kind of dusky green to them and are very muted with some gray in the colors. So I wanted to reflect that a bit in this theme. Summer is also bushfire season in Australia, so a lot of things are quite brown and burned. We do a lot of hazard reduction burning over here to prevent bushfires from being really terrifying and destructive. So when there's a lot of smoke in the air, that's kind of the color that the air goes. So that's a little nod to our bushfire season. This booklet of stickers I found at Officeworks. It's really hard for me to link Officeworks things in the description because YouTube seems to always flag them as being spam somehow. But I got so excited when I found this because it is a series of Christmas stickers with Australian animals represented and Australian flowers and things like that too. And I just got so excited and thought I have to have this in my journal. You might remember I attempted to use the dip pen for my November theme and I ended up smudging my ink a lot and deciding it was a little bit too much effort. I thought I'd give it another go this time around, but I'm trying things very differently. I'm using a tip that my wonderful friend and channel member Rachel gave me, which is instead of using fountain pen ink with my dip pen, I'm instead using watercolor paint. I actually took an entire Skillshare class on copper plate calligraphy right before I filmed this video and I used that as kind of a warm up. So if you find that you rush through calligraphy like I do, I really recommend a class as a way to warm up because it really made me slow down and think about what I was doing. And I was well warmed up and in the swing of things by the time I got to lettering this quote page, which is great. My quote this time is less of a quote and more of an Australian slang term. <laughs> Although it does strike me as something you might hear on an episode of Kath and Kim. I haven't watched a lot of Kath and Kim, but I don't know, it seems like where it would show up. Down up like a Christmas tree. It's a kind of nasty way to say that somebody is overdressed or that something is overdecorated, but it's kind of a fun way. I don't know, we like saying things in really strange ways in Australia, I guess. I do feel like Christmas is the time for tacky though, and I thought it would be really fun to just sort of have a little nod to that in my journal in a bit of a tongue in cheek and sassy way. So hence my quote page for this month. I'm very new still to copper plate calligraphy, so I don't feel like this is especially amazing lettering, but I do really enjoy the contrast of a classic calligraphy style with a slang quote, so that's pretty fun. Most of the decoration for this theme is in that kind of scrapbooky style, but I definitely wanted to make sure I had space to put a header for December as well. So I'm just tucking that right underneath the rectangle of decorative elements that's right above. And I'm going to let everything dry for a really long time before I try to erase any pencil marks this time, because that is how I messed up in November. And I will not make that mistake again, at least not today. As always, I will link to as many of the things that I'm using in this video as I possibly can in the description, but quite a bit of this stuff actually came from Australian retailers this time around. These gold foil PET stickers are from Spotlight as well, which means not everything may be available to my international viewers, but if I can find similar things, I will link to those as well. Now here's an item that I never thought I would be using for a Christmas theme, but is actually perfect for it. These tiny little washi stickers are from the washi tape shop. They're from the Misty Flower washi tape sticker set, 
and I love that they do sort of look like Australian native flowers. I don't think they're intended to look like Australian native flowers, but I think that they really do. I've layered some of them just underneath the doily to give kind of a wreath sort of effect. And of course I need to add a little bit of extra something to balance out the right page because the little bit of washi tape I'd laid down wasn't really doing it. It wasn't enough visual weight to balance out the cover page on the right there. If what I just said made absolutely no sense to you, I have a video about how to improve the look of your bullet journal using three really prominent graphic design concepts. So if you'd like to watch that and maybe level up your layouts, I will have a link to that in the top right corner of the screen, as well as in the description box down below. This is one of those layouts where I didn't have a really solid idea in mind of how it was going to look once I jumped into it, but everything came together. You kind of just work with what you can see in the moment, and it's a very kind of creative flowing process and I had so much fun. I did find I would get really wrapped up in the warm tones though and I would have to actively remind myself to get some green on the page. So thank goodness for the stickers from the office work set because there were lots of lovely ones in there that had little flowers and things like that on them that would help me bring a bit of green to the page without being too difficult to work in. Let's turn the page now and get started on the calendar spread. The Sakura Pigma Micron 03 is my absolute favorite fine liner, and I think I have three of them. I have washi tape on the end so I can differentiate which pen is which, but all of them are running out. So the lines this time around were gonna be kind of broken and imperfect anyway, so I'm sort of leaning into that and deliberately making my lines a little bit softer by leaving some little gaps in them. This calendar is set up with a series of boxes that are four spaces by four spaces. And I always like my weeks to start on a Monday, so I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday on the left page, Friday, Saturday and Sunday on the right. I'm such a big fan of having a torn edge of a washi texture in my journal as a decorative element, so having these big sheets of washi just is perfect for me. I didn't want to get too complicated on decoration for this one, so I've decided to line the outside edges of the page, the left side of the left page and the right side of the right page. I'm using the washi tape from Paper Monogatari first right along the edge of the page and then right next to that, right along the edge of the washi, I'm putting the washi sheet. Is that the best name for this? That's what I'm gonna go with, I don't know. But I love the effect of the two next to each other. I thought I'd try to be ambitious and use the dip pen again to put the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday along the calendar, but I'm still getting the hang of using watercolor for my dip pen, so I put a big blob on the page instead. We're gonna wait for that to dry before I come back and fix where the lettering will go there. But it's not the end of the world. I haven't completely ruined the page, I've just ruined a little bit, so we'll go with it, it's okay. Maybe later I'll come back and try and fix it up with a white paint marker and just colour in around where the letters are supposed to be. The spread needs some green though, so it's time to seek out some green from my lovely little Officeworks booklet of stickers. I love this one with the galah on the wreath of Banksias. It is so lovely. I think a lot of people think of snakes and spiders when they think of Australian wildlife, but we have a lot of really cool stuff too. From there I'm just adding some snowflakes around, even though snowflakes make no sense for us. I like the stickers and I think they look cute with the colour scheme so I'm going to use them anyway. And of course we need to get some of our little flowers in here as well so I'm just going to scatter those throughout as well. I really like layering things, I like having things peek out from behind other things. So quite often I end up peeling off things that I've already stuck down and adding a little something to sit just behind them. I do that a lot. With the calendar spread all set up, we can turn the page now and move on to my goals, favorites and musings page, which is one that has been a favorite for me all year. It serves so many purposes. Obviously the goals section is for any goals I wanna set for just the month of December. Excuse me while I struggle a bit with my straight edge guillotine cutting device here because there is some paper stuck in it and it won't go past a certain point. I love having the favorite section to write down whatever I'm into at the moment, which I think is the kind of thing that grows in value over time because when you look back on your journal in five or six or 10 or 12 years time, you'll be like, oh, remember that TV show? I'd forgotten all about it. And then it's a nice little walk down memory lane. So that's what the favorite section is for. And Musings is really just my name for a brain dump because I think brain dump sounds kind of terrible. <laughs> I don't like the terminology. So I changed it to Musings and I just write down whatever's on my mind in that section. And some months I use the heck out of it and some months I barely touch it. So, you know, it's there to serve me when I need it. 
If I would actually sit down and do the long form journaling every day that I keep telling myself I'm going to do, like I did every day with no trouble as a teenager somehow, then maybe I wouldn't need the musing section, but I don't do that, so... The musing section functions as a short form journaling outlet, I guess. <laughs> I'm also decorating the opposite page at the same time because it's going to have a somewhat similar layout. I'm doing a very different page order than I normally would because I've been getting kind of bored. I noticed in October a little bit, I loved my theme so much, but the actual function of the pages I noticed I wasn't reaching for as often. I was kind of just admiring it and then putting it back down. And very much in November with a similar kind of thing where I just wasn't that excited to pick up my journal. So I decided that means I need to change some things. So we're having the Goals, favorites, and musings on the left and on the right will be my spending log, which usually comes much, much later. I'm actually doing less pages overall in this setup because I'm incorporating a couple of my usual trackers into my weekly spreads later on, rather than giving them pages of their own because I have not been flipping back to them to use them. But I do use my weeklies, so I figure if I can put everything in one place, then I'll kind of be forced to use it. It'll be right there in front of me and I'll remember it exists, you know? But that's actually way ahead, we're not up to that yet. For now we're just doing some boxes for goals, favourites and musings on the left page. Leave me a dollar sign emoji in the comments down below if this is the 500 millionth time you've watched me set up the exact same spending log because I never change it. This is one, even though I've been doing it the same way over and over, I haven't got bored with it because it works. I don't want to mess with a system that's working well for me, so it is two tables smushed onto one page because that takes up less space than I used to do two tables across two pages and I just did not need that much room. This is the place where I write down everything that I spend money on. I give it a category in the second column and in the third column I write down how much it cost. So at the end of the month I can tally up everything that I spent on, for instance, petrol for my car or eating outside of my house or business expenses, stuff like that, and I can see where all of my money went. I have a big overall cash flow tracker that's at the very beginning of my journal as well so I can put all of this information from across the whole year into one big kind of spreadsheet type thing in my journal too. And then I can see the totals of how much I spent on takeaway food over the whole year which is sometimes a little terrifying but also it's good to keep track of it because then you're aware, you know? I'm usually a hardcore Tombow dual brush pen girl for all of my highlighting and providing a background colour needs. I'm trying out the Archer and Olive Calliographs that I got in one of the subscription boxes. I made a video reviewing the subscription boxes recently, so that's in the description or in the top right corner of the screen right now if you'd like to watch that one. How do, am I finding the Calliographs? Um, they're okay. This one is kind of leaking inside its cap already and it's... I've only used it a couple of times, so that's not ideal. But anyway, the spending log page is finished, so let's turn over and we'll start on the next one. This is gonna be my content planner spread and I'm doing it very differently to usual. Ordinarily, I just make this a calendar like we did for the calendar a couple of pages ago, but with bigger spaces, and I do this color coding system to keep track of all the different accounts that I use. That's getting overwhelming. <laughs> And I'm posting a lot more in November and December than I usually do, particularly to YouTube. So I wanted something that was a little bit more clear. So I'm doing this kind of vertical calendar instead and I'm dividing the space next to it into three columns for YouTube, for live streams and for Instagram. If I'm being totally honest, I've been terrible about scheduling content for my actual normal day job photography business and I still have the account for it but I haven't posted anything in a while and I don't really think I care that much about keeping it going and trying to build a following there so I'm kind of just ignoring that one now and I'm just going to focus on the ones that are fun to keep. That middle row does cross the middle of the page, which is gonna be kind of annoying to write on. And I think I got the spacing wrong on one of them as well, where one of the columns is wider than the others. But overall, it looks fine. It doesn't matter as long as it serves its purpose for a month and I can schedule my content out in a way that makes sense in my brain, then I think it's gonna to be totally fine. 
I do actually try to sit down and schedule out all of my content for a whole month or at least plan what's going to go in places for things that I can't just schedule like an Instagram carousel post obviously is quite easy to schedule. A YouTube video takes a lot more time and effort to prepare, shoot, edit, captions, uploading, description, everything. There's a lot of work that goes into those so I'll plan what's going to go where but those ones I don't kind of schedule all at once because I can't. <laughs> I just don't have that much free time. I've added the initial and the number for each day of the week into the brown column that's to the left of the YouTube column so I know where I am. You know, obviously it's always going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth from the top of the column but it just helps me to have everything lined up and really clearly marked and visible so I don't have to think about anything besides scheduling the content when I'm using this page, you know? And of course we need to add some pretty decoration. I feel like there's already quite a bit going on. The calligraph pens I'm using are really pigmented and saturated, so I didn't want to go too hard on decoration for this one. We're just doing a little bit of the same Czech washi tape that we had earlier, a little bit of green in the top right and bottom left corners. And of course we'll add some Aussie critters and some Aussie flowers and some Aussie looking flowers but not necessarily Aussie flowers over the top of these as well so that everything is nice and consistent. Everything from the theme is represented so that it all looks like a cohesive theme altogether. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited to start using this content planner spread and see if it's easier and makes more sense in my brain than the old way. And if it doesn't, then I'll just go back to using the old one. This one is actually gonna be the first weekly spread for this setup. And I feel like I'm really jumping on the trendy train here because I've seen so many people do their weekly spreads with Dutch doors like this lately. And part of me was like, go against the grain, Erin, don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. But I also really see the merit in this kind of system. The way this works is that you remove part of each page so that you can see the outside edges of the pages that are next to them. You can do this just by removing one page or you can remove several like I'm doing here. I feel like the visual here is going to be a better explanation than what I can try to say with words. It will make more sense as it comes together. But basically I'm going to be using the outside edges of the pages that are visible regardless of where you are in the weeklies where we've cut away the edges. They'll constantly be visible so I can easily access my mood tracker and my habit tracker which are going in those gaps on the sides. I do all of my day-to-day -day planning on my weekly spreads. That's where my to-do lists are, that's where my events go so that I don't forget about things. It's where I write reminders to myself. I really use the weeklies hard so my theory is that by having the habit tracker and the mood tracker completely visible regardless of where I am in my weeks means that I will be more inclined to remember to fill it out and we will have to see how that goes to know if the theory proves correct but I'm gonna give it a red hot go. I love my little corner punch tool. I love how it makes the corners of the Dutch doors look really deliberate and intentional like that's just how the notebook came. It was always like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess the sound of the corner punch is something similar to a pss 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 that calls a cat to you because it seems to have called my cat to me. He's come to investigate and make sure that my Dutch doors are up to code. Thank you Mitsu for your approval. For the sake of symmetry, I'm only going to track four habits this time. So I'm gonna put two on the flap that's on the left side and I'm gonna put the other two directly opposite them, mirroring them on the other side on the right page there. I feel like December really is the season when the habits go out the window, so I can't decide if having more habits or less habits is a better idea, but I'm also really conscious of the fact that I want to include a mood tracker here too, and I want it to be somewhat of a decorative serving mood tracker where it's pretty as well as being functional, so I'm trying to leave some space for that. 
If you like the idea of this layout, but you would want to track more habits than me, you could absolutely do that. Or you could track all four on one side and have just the mood tracker on the other side as well, if you'd rather. Of course, I still wanted to fit some decoration around to make this work with the rest of the theme. So I'm just adding tiny little strips of the washi on the left and right sides as well. Enough so that your brain goes, hey, that looks like it makes sense with the other pages and I like it. But not so much that your brain goes, oh, there's a lot going on here and it's interfering with the trackers. At some point this weekly needs to become a functional weekly as well, so I'm going to add horizontal boxes in here. I've had horizontal boxes recently and found that they weren't quite enough space, but they're going to have to do because we are of course limiting ourselves by cutting off half of the page. I have seen some people do a really interesting take on this where instead of removing part of the page to make the Dutch door, they actually fold it in so it's like a little flap that pops out. I'm not sure that's for me. I discovered I don't like tip-ins where you completely add more paper to the journal that you can kind of like look under a flap or whatever. So I feel like that's kind of a similar thing. It's too much fussing around for me, but if that sounds like a good idea to you, you should definitely give it a go. to admit the mood tracker stumped me for a while, but then it hit me. Stamps. Not stamps like I did in October where I needed to actually use a stamp every day, but stamps that I can pre-stamp down on the page and then colour in as though they are an illustrative element. That's what I'm going to do. So I've busted out my Quirky Cup Collective stamp sets. I have both the fantasy and fiction and also the practical magic sets. And I've taken some of the smaller stamps that have kind of a celestial theme because I feel like that works for Christmas, you know? Christmas and stars, they go together. I think it's fine. So I'm using those in a bit of a random haphazard way, just in the spaces around the left and right sides. I'm using a black Tombow N15 pen to make them look like they're kind of just line art. And I'm being very careful to make sure that there are exactly 31 of them so I can color in a different one every day in a color that matches the mood that I assign to it. We will have a little key in one spot so that we can determine what color matches which mood. And I've used a tiny teensy little 01 Pigma Micron to assign the number to each one of them so that the numbers don't jump out too much from the page. I wanted them to be tiny and subtle. Remember I mentioned earlier the calligraph was kind of bleeding in its cap? I'm just going to wipe it off on a tissue because I'm scared of what might happen if it continues to bleed. Hopefully that gets it sorted, but I really like the colour of this one, so I wanted to use the smaller brush end for my lettering. I really like really fine, tiny little soft brush pen ends because I find them great for tiny lettering. You can get into tight spaces, but they also work really well for larger areas too. Just really versatile. The small brush end on the calligraphs is good for that, but so are the uh, brush sign pens and also the, oh, the ones I can never remember the names of, the Fude Masake. Now that we've confirmed where all the mood tracker stuff is going, I can jump back in one more time with the little flower stickers from the washi tape shop roll. Just make sure they're represented here and keeping the theme going. And I always love adding a little bit of offset onto boxes like that, just to give it a bit of something spicy. I'm leaving the extra weeklies blank for now so we can set them up together on live stream. But here we are, we've got habit trackers on each side, the functional weekly stuff in the middle, and then the mood tracker we need to assign some colors to so I know what to color in each one depending on my mood for that day. So I'm gonna do four this time around. I'm just using the colors that we've been using throughout, basically browns, rusty browns, dusty greens, and I'm assigning each one a little happy face so I know what color to color things in. And then on the appropriate day, I will choose the appropriate color for my mood and color in the star or sun or moon in the color that corresponds to my mood. It's honestly wild to me that I have finished setting up for December 2023. I feel like the year just started and here we are finishing it. I'm not ready, but I have had a really good time setting up this theme. I loved trying some new things. I loved getting to represent some Aussie Christmas in my journal and I loved spending this time with you as well. So thank you for being here with me. 
Besides the wombats in Christmas hats, I don't feel like it's a super Christmassy layout, although my desk setup definitely is, so if you're not someone who celebrates Christmas, I hope you still got something out of this video as well. On the flip side, if you're someone who loves Christmas and this was not Christmassy enough for you, have a look at the link on the right here. This is last year's December plan with me. It is much more Christmas than this year's was. And underneath that, there is the playlist of every setup I've done for my bullet journal in 2023 in case you want to have a little trip down memory lane. Catch you again really soon. Bye.